Huawei's top of the line business laptop, the MateBook X Pro has a refresh here for late 2022. It's refined even further. What was already a great Ultrabook is even better now. So we have this new soft touch material. They've gone with a new build, magnesium alloy, and it's even lighter now, 1.27 kilos. Backlit keyboard, very good large touchpad. It's got six speakers built into it, four microphones, and it's all powered now by the 12th gen Core i7, the 1260p. It's got 12 cores and 16 threads, so it's quite a powerful chipset, and it's paired up with a 16 gigabyte LPDDR5 RAM setup and a one terabyte SSD, which is PCIe 3.0. It also does have Wi-Fi 6E, as you'd expect, the latest tech here, and it is extremely quick. The screen is a stunner. Very slim bezels, 14.1 inches. The resolution is 3120 by 2080. It's a touch screen and it even has 97% of P3 color gamut coverage. So it is a real stunner here. Inside the box, you'll find Huawei's supercharger. So this is 90 watts. We have their type C to type C cable. And because this laptop does not have any type A ports, they do include this an adapter, which is great. So that's Type-C to Type-A USB. And the total weight of these accessories comes to 249 grams. This laptop weighs just 1.27 kilos. It's very light and it happens to have probably the best build quality that I've ever covered in an Ultrabook in a laptop like this. So we have here their ink blue color. So it's a, um, a textured finish, well not really textured, it's a soft touch finish. And it's not one of those rubberized coatings that later is going to peel off and feels a bit cheap. No, this thing just screams premium, really good build quality. So pressing down on the lid, there is basically hardly any flex there at all because it does have a fully laminated IPS panel on the other side. So you can open it up one handed and I really like the feel of this lid that when you close it, the magnets pull it in tight and it is not gonna open up or anything. It's a really nice feeling lid. The hinge feels great too, and it just opens up. So straight away you see our backlit keyboard here. Now it's a good size for a 14 inch laptop. We have our power button that's separated away with its inbuilt fingerprint reader from GoodX, and that works with Windows Hello. So you can see speaker grills here left and right. Our touchpad is an excellent touchpad too. This is one of the best touchpads that I have tested out with a Windows laptop. Very nice, great feel to it as well, and it responds just to every single touch perfectly, and it's really quite accurate, very usable. I don't find I need to plug in a mouse, which is not common for me. Normally I plug in a mouse. I just wanna use a mouse straight away, but no, this touchpad is excellent. So the keyboard here, typing on it, there's barely any flex, maybe a tiny little bit. We've got 1.5 millimeters of travel. It's spaced out quite well, and I'll just show you that backlight now. So we have two levels of the backlighting here for the keyboard. So that is obviously off, that's the first level, and then the second. Now it's a little bit brighter than what I'm showing and representing here, but it's a very good backlit keyboard. I really do like it. The underside here, you will see that we don't have any vents or grills. The air is pulled through the sides of it, and then it comes out the back, the hot air from the dual fans that it does have and they've got that shark fin design now, and apparently the cooling has improved. So there are six speakers built into this. Unfortunately, the review units here, we aren't allowed to open them up. They're loan units, so I can't show you the internals. This laptop is incredibly thin, so measuring right here, I am measuring 14 millimeters, which is excellent. And you see we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We've got two Thunderbolt ports here, so Thunderbolt 4.0 status LED. So these do support charging. All of the ports do support power delivery and the charger, which is great. So imagine you accidentally break one of these ports. Well, then you've got three more ports that you can use with it. Over the other side, we have another two Type-C ports. Now these ones are USB 3.2, I believe Gen 2 ports. What is missing for me is at least one type A port would be very convenient. Then you don't have to use adapters and dongles all of the time. And I would love to see also an SD card slot, but hey, they're keeping it very streamlined and sleek. So for me, that's a minor con there. You have to use adapters to plug in USB pen drives. And like we have seen with Huawei's other laptops, they are using the four microphone setup, and this does improve the sound quality greatly. So if you're in a lot of conference calls, Zoom meetings, other online meetings, then this really does come in handy. Having the microphones here closer to you really does improve the quality 
And then of course they've got four of them and they're high quality mics. Later on I'll give you a sample of what they're like with the webcam quality. And our screen that's in this MateBook X Pro, an absolute stunner. That's the first thing that when I first used this, they, wow, that's a good screen. So the brightness, they claim that it's 500 nits, but it's actually what I'm measuring is 595 nits. So almost 600 nits of brightness, very good. So you can see when I do crank it up here a little bit, it's gonna get really bright. It is a super bright screen. And the reflections aren't so bad, especially with that brightness up, it does really help out. Now it is a touch screen here, so we've got full touch support with it, 10 touch points. The bezels, look at how slim they are left and right, they are very nice. And we're looking at a 92.5% screen to body ratio. So it's 14.2 inches, IPS, 3120 by 2080 is our resolution. And it looks sharp, you cannot see pixels. I'll just go over quickly now here our color coverage, which is excellent. This is top end, so it's a professional panel. We're looking at 97% of P3 color gamut coverage there. That's excellent. Adobe RGB, that's 90%, also very good. NTSC, 89%, and sRGB is 99%, so really good there. It also does have a hardware solution for blue light with its low blue light filter. And it's a flicker free screen. It's actually certified for that too. So an excellent panel that they do have here, Huawei. Now the reflection you can see a little bit here. That's just some bright windows, of course, in the background there. A little bit of that, but overall it is a real stunner of a panel that they've gone with. The MateBook X Pro does come with 16 gigabytes of RAM and we have 15.7 usable. So we still don't have an option that we could get this with 32 gigabytes of RAM or an optional dedicated GPU. Now, I would love to see this. For me, it's really the only thing that this laptop is lacking for those more power users out there that want, say, uh, more 3D performance for video editing, CAD, and maybe a little bit of light gaming. A low-end RTX 3050 or the 2050 would be perfect with this particular laptop. So we have Windows 11 Home here with it, and you'll see that the process is that Core i7, so the 1260p. Maximum turbo is 4.7 gigahertz. It is very fast, and the whole Windows here just feels incredibly quick. There's no lag, everything, even multitasking, it just swaps over between everything. Great. So we have different power levels as well. If you press function P, you can swap over then to the performance mode, that's 30 watts but it will actually end up pulling up to a peak of about 80 watts here with this particular chipset. So you will see that it's listed here in Device Manager 16 times because it has 16 threads. So in such a thin laptop with 16 threads, it's got a lot of power, so 12 cores, and we do have this, which is Wi-Fi AX201, so it's a very good chipset. This one is really quick, so about 1.3 gigabit Transfers is what I'm able to get for wireless is really good. So faster than gigabit LAN, of course. And if you do have a Wi-Fi 6E router, you should be able to get even more out of it. So we do have IR cameras up the top there for Windows Hello Login. And the camera is a 720p one. I'll give you a sample of that later on in this review. The fingerprint reader that I pointed out before when we took a look at the hardware. So that's from Goodex. It works really well. They've been using Goodex fingerprint readers for some time. And I've never really had any problems with them at all. So the RAM there, you can see we've got DDR5 RAM. It's actually LP DDR5, so 5.2 gigahertz. It's at the highest clock speed, so we get a lot of memory bandwidth, really good performance, and it is, of course, in dual channel. So I'll just show you a few synthetic benchmarks. So here is Geekbench 5. Now, you can download and install this on your own hardware, run it, and see what kind of difference you are looking at with your current, say, business laptop, work laptop. So this single core score here is impressive. That's really quick. So they made huge leaps and bounds here, Intel moving from the 11th gen to the 12th. It is a big step up, so especially with this multi-core score here, nearing 10,000 points. That is really good. So here you'll see with OpenCL, 20,000 points here. So that's a good score for Iris XE graphics with 96 executional units. The integrated graphics, it is very good. It's very similar to, say, the, the Vega 10 graphics that you would get with AMD. And here is just an integrated graphics benchmark here, 3D Mark Night Raid, getting over 21 points. It's a very good score there for, again, for integrated graphics. That is impressive. Now, I do have Cinebench here, show you the results of that. So single core score, again, just like Geekbench 5, 
really good, that performance. And you can see here the multi-core score there. Again, that's very, very high. It did lower down a little bit after 10 minutes because this loops the benchmark for 10 minutes. But you see the performance there is similar to uh, eight core CPUs, but we do have 12 with this one. But considering how thin and light this laptop is, the, the performance is really impressive. Now the SSD, for me, this is one of a, a bit of a con here. Not for a lot of people. It's still very quick. Don't get me wrong. It's PCIe 3.0 spec. We've got one terabyte. However, everyone else is using PCIe 4.0 spec SSDs, which would give us a score here, sequential reads and writes of 7,000 megabytes per second. So we are losing out. We're, this is about half the speed now that we could potentially have which this chipset supports. We've got Thunderbolt 4 on board, so if you're transferring files really fast, it's great to have the highest possible write speeds or read speeds. It's just a minor there, but I do hope that Huawei listens to this feedback and moves over to PCIe 4 because it is about time now that we did get the newer generation of SSDs in the MateBook X Pro series especially. So for the built-in software, we've got Huawei's multi-screen mode here. So I can connect up various other different Huawei devices. So this is the Mate X2 that I've got. So you can see I can use it here on screen. It's actually very fast and fluid. So this is wirelessly transmitting my mobile over onto the laptop. So you can drag and drop files. I've also got the Mate Pad there too that I can share files with seamlessly. It's actually very handy, really good software. And if you go into the PC manager, You've got performance tuning, so that's the power modes. You also have driver updates and optimization, the control panel, and quite a few things. So I wouldn't consider this software at all to be bloatware. No, it's actually very practical, very useful. And you'll see other devices that can be listed in there too. And you've got a few settings there for Huawei sound, camera, free touch, and you see under here drivers. Now I've already had some driver updates come through. So it's very easy, just one place where you can update all the drivers, the BIOS and everything. And then it just does a restart. So good built-in software. There's no McAfee, terrible bloatware antivirus programs or anything like that. No, that's not included. Then video playback performance. So this is a jellyfish test file here. It's 140 megabits per second. You see it does an initial little stutter. This always seems to happen with Windows, but once it's going, it is smooth to play back here. So the 96 executional units of the Iris XE integrated graphics from Intel is what is, of course, decoding this. So VP9 HEVC is not going to be a problem. 4K60, this file it actually does seem to handle a little bit better without any noticeable lag and stutters. So that starts out like in slow motion at the start, that's normal. It's not dropping frames, it's not lagging. There we go. Now this file is playing back normally and it isn't dropping any frames here. So good performance with these demanding video files. 4K video streaming in YouTube. So 4K 60 this time too, to see how it is going to perform. Now, as long as you've got a good internet connection, you should not have any problems with this. So enabling the stats, you can see it is occasionally dropping frames but there are not that many frames that it does drop, so you don't really notice it. So you see, okay, that's more consistent. So it's 60 frames per second, but it's clearly dropping around about one, two frames a second, but that's something that you're not gonna be able to detect. I'm not seeing it. If I was not enabling the stats, I wouldn't actually know that it's dropping any frames here. And moving over to our webcam, so this is located in the top bezel. It does have a status LED next to it, which is white to let you know that it is on. Now we do have the AI features that we saw with some of the newer laptops that they brought in this year. And I really do like this because you can get rid of your boring background, like my studio set here that we've seen for years on end now, and I can completely change it. Look, I can be on the beach here. And it does a pretty good job too of stitching me into this virtual background. So you can add your own custom backgrounds. Now this background you can see is like a GIF that it's moving. There's movement in the background of it, but we have static ones too. So I can be in a study here. I've got cityscape. It looks like I'm in a high rise office building there, meeting rooms. We've seen that one before. And there's a lot of different ones here to choose from. And they've added a whole new bunch of backgrounds here and they do look good. Now the audio quality, you are listening to those four microphones that I showed you before when we looked at the build and the design of the MateBook X Pro here, that those microphones are closer to us and we do get excellent audio quality 
with this laptop. Video editing is something that is quite demanding, especially if it is 4K. So I have 4K files here that are 100 megabits per second from a Sony A6300. And you will see here that the playback is fine. Scrubbing your head doesn't lag as long as you keep the preview here, the playback uh, set to half resolution. If you run it at full, it'll drop frames a little bit. Now, if we had, did have an option to get this particular model here with a dedicated low-end GPU like an RTX 2050, RTX 3050, this would greatly improve video performance for editing big edits. So right now, I would stick to basic tasks with it. So what I'm going to do now is just go along and export this with the YouTube preset. We'll see how long it takes. It should be well under a minute, should be under even 30 seconds for one minute of footage. So it just finished up and it took over a minute there. So that is slower than expected. The laptop has some really good sound too. So we've got six speakers built into this and it's Huawei sound that they call it. Now I'll give you a sample of it at 100% volume. I just wanted to comment that it's really quite impressive the way this laptop sounds considering how thin it is. It's only a 14.1 inch laptop and it's outdoing most of the gaming laptops out there which should have better sound but it's really impressive here, as you'll hear from this example, that it is powerful, it's loud, there's good mids, bit of bass to it, and your highs are there too. So this sample I'll play now will be at 100% volume, which doesn't distort. Then gaming performance, can it game and can you play a demanding game like Cyberpunk 2077? Now I've got it set to low settings, 720p and it's not looking good, We're only around 9 frames per second. I've got it in the performance mode, I've double checked everything. This is not performing how I would expect the Iris XE graphics to perform. Normally you get around close to 30 frames per second here, so it is clearly throttling, you can see that while well, temperatures are getting a little hot, well it's about 81 degrees at the moment, and it's pulling about 26 watts, so it's clearly throttling down, restricting the Iris XE graphics performance here. So it's clearly not performing as it should here. I can hear the fans are on, but they're not really that loud, so again, clearly it is throttling. I do hope that Huawei has a BIOS update or a patch that they can simply just push out over their update system to correct this and improve performance, because the 3D performance here is disappointing. It should be almost double the frame rate here, only 32 frames per second. It should be at least 60. Hey, what's going on? It's my idea. How about our thermals on this thin and light, powerful laptop? So you can see it gets up to 101 degrees. Now this, it just spikes at. It's only briefly once the fan RPMs ramp up. It drops down under sustained continual load, like I can run for you Cinebench, Cinebench right now, and I'll just show you what I mean, that it will end up lowering down. So it'll peak initially, and then it lowers down once those fan RPMs kick in. So it will take a little while for it to do that. So it's under constant load now. So once the fan creeps up, it'll be fine there. Now fan noise is very good. So they've got that shark fin design. The cooling is excellent in this model. And you'll see that it does end up pulling up to 65 watts here with this 12 core chip. So a little bit more power hungry when they're under heavy loads like benchmarks like this. But overall acceptable, good thermals and the palm rest and the touchpad does not get hot. Very quickly, I did want to mention what I'm getting in terms of battery life and charge time. So to go from 1% to 100, it took me timing this with battery bar right here one hour and 41 minutes to fully charge the 60 watt hour battery. And I can get a battery life of seven hours and 56 minutes of light loads. This is light office work, uh, YouTube streaming, things like that at 30% brightness. Now, if you lower the brightness down even further and you're still just with, of course, light workloads, you're able to get then, I've able, been able to achieve just over nine hours. So nine hours and 26 minutes it's reporting there, but that's just going easy on it. Now, any demanding work, really drops that time down to about six hours. So depending on your workloads, you should be able to make it through a full workday with this particular laptop. It is really a absolute stunner of a laptop here. We've got an amazing screen, the build quality even more refined. It's pretty much 
Perfect, you cannot fault this build here. It's really good. We've got Windows Hello for the webcam to log in and the fingerprint reader, great backlit keyboard, touchpad, great. It's very light, it's only 1.25 kilos, yet it can still pack quite a bit of power. Now, short term, short bursts of performance seem to be very good. However, I did notice that if you intend to push it hard on the Iris XE graphics side of things like video exporting or gaming, it seems to have a bit of an issue there with it throttling. So that's something to me to do with the BIOS that they probably just really need to release an update there to help just increase that performance. I think it's got something to do with the fans and just whatever they set that the clocks would be at when it starts to throttle a little bit. Because the fans aren't really that loud at all. It feels to me that they could really push it quite a bit higher, but they just haven't for some reason. So do look out for changes and perhaps I'll post a comment down in this video as well if I do get a firmware update that fixes that issue with it. So we do have Thunderbolt 4 on this, which is great. You can use external GPU Type-C docks there. Anything from Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 3 onwards, of course, for that, like one of those Razer setups. And the battery life, it's okay, you get about eight hours of light use, so it should be able to make it through a full day, and then it fully charges in under two hours with the 90 watt supercharger you get with Huawei. So it really is, for me, the screen's the big change that just how nice it really is now with the 97% P3 color gamut coverage. Touch works great, it's sharp, and it's super bright. In fact, brighter than they claim. The spec sheet that I got said it's 500 nits, but I measured it with my Spider uh, X Pro and it comes out at almost 600 nits, which is great to see that it's other way around. Normally with a lot of manufacturers, they're always under their claim, but not here with this case. And the material now, the new material does feel really good, adds a bit of grip to it as well. It doesn't feel very slippery. So there are the downsides, other downsides with the lack of ports for some people. For me, it's still a bit of an issue. I would love to see a USB type A port Man, maybe it's old tech now, but still, a USB 3.2 Type-A would have been great on this for just plugging in straight away USB pen drives, for example. You don't have to use that dongle. And it, it is great that Huawei does include a Type-C to Type-A dongle. That's good. Others are, well, minors. So I would love to see a configuration with 32 gigabytes of RAM and also dedicated GPU. Something like an RTX 2050 or an RTX 3050 would be great in a business-focused machine like this to then open up another market for Huawei for people that like to do video editing on the go, people that do 3D CAD work, any 3D work or anything that requires and just more than of course Iris XE graphics. So overall it is again, yet again, another stunner of a business laptop here from Huawei. Thanks a lot for watching my review of the MateBook X Pro 2022 revised or second edition, second release.